Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and it's wonderful that you could stop by today to take part in today's video. And the subject of today's video is near and dear to my heart. It's my 2004 iMac G5 that I picked up in a Facebook Marketplace expedition fairly recently. Um, the, the reason this is so near and dear to my heart, as I said, this is a twin to the first PowerPC Mac computer that I ever owned. I've had computers before that, certainly, uh, but they were, they were PCs. This was my first working Mac, and it was a workhorse, and it st stood the test of time for many, 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 many years. Ah, oh, how long did I use that computer? 2004. Up through 2009, I think, maybe 2010. Yeah, I think it would be 2010 uh, when I bought my first Intel uh, iMac. That, that was a point where Snow Leopard had come out, and while Snow Leopard didn't seem to be that big a jump from Leopard, it was clearly going to be the end of the line eventually. So I made the jump at that point. Well, in any event, uh, this machine currently has 512 megabytes of RAM. We're going to give it its full 2 gigabyte. Uh, it has an 80 gig mechanical hard drive. We're going to replace that with a 500 gig SSD, which I intend to partition and put on Leopard, of course, but I'm also going to put on Panther. The reason for that being that's what this machine came from originally. That's what it was running when I used it. And from 2004 up to 2007, anyway, I skipped over Tiger. I was so happy with Panther. So, again, for the nostalgia, if nothing else, we're, we're going to put Panther on this. So, uh, this, I think this is going to be very cool. I'm looking forward to it. And if you are, please, please stay tuned. All right, these, these machines uh, open up incredibly easily. There are three Phillips screws here on the bottom of the case. They're captive, which is really nice, so you're not going to lose one. So you just turn them until they stop. Do not try to remove them. Forceful removing them could damage it. All right. Now, see the RAM right here? Seem to want to come out. Okay. Putting in our new RAM. There we go. Add it up a little bit too much. Yeah, these remind me of changing. Uh, RAM on 2010 Mac Minis, 2010 to 2012 Mac Minis, same sort of arrangement up here. Okay, now, it occurs to me it would be wise to replace the PRAM, but, huh, you look at that. There's an airport card. Now, the, that was going to have to come out anyway because the PRAM battery is lodged in here of uh, these uh, springs holding them in are pretty tough but there's a little opening there you can stick the end of a spudger into it and then just slide your new battery in all right Yeah, that's a bonus. Now we're going to have to see if that actually works. Okay, now the hard drive. First thing we've got to do here is remove, and I need the smaller Phillips. We need to remove two screws. 
that hold the fan cover on. We don't really need to remove the fan itself, but the fan cover does go over the edge of the hard drive. It's already kind of loose. Surprising. All right, noticing which one of those screws goes with, where? All right, that comes off and here's a hard drive. Now, All right, hang on. I gotta gotta look this up and find out exactly what those screws are. Stay tuned. All right, I see now. Now I I, I have done this before, but it's been quite a while. Uh, probably the biggest pain, as I remember, is trying to disconnect. Yep, the hard drive thermal sensor. It is in there, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go contrary to the directions and remove these screws. Because I tend to think the actual removal of the sensor cable will be easier if I can get it out of this tiny space. There's that second screw, and the third one is over here. Get that cable up and out of the way. And the three screws are loose. Now, we have here the SATA cables, that's the power, SATA cables should pull a little more easily, but it isn't, hard drive this just doesn't want to come out and I remember when I did this before I did this before, this was exactly the problem I had. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to fuss with this a bit off camera, so this doesn't become a two-hour video. Stay tuned. It actually proved not to be that bad. My mistake was thinking that it would pull straight out. It doesn't. It clips itself around here and just slides off that way. And when you do that, it's quite easy. Okay. Next is we have to remove, and that's a Torx. Why, Apple, do you do this? Everything's a Phillips until you get to here, then you've got to get your Torx driver. T8, by the way.
Okay, put the hard drive aside. Now for this. Picked up the Phillips again. Oh, the other Phillips. Now we have the Torx driver. Ah, uh, yes. Things go so much more easily when you use the right tool. It's interesting documenting all of this because I reveal what an idiot I can be. But hey, it's part of the charm of it all. Okay, one last screw. Yeah, it goes on so easily, it would have come off that easily, too. All right. Let's see if we can get this into place. Oh, I see this is the problem. There we go. Out of cables back in. And secure the drive. Yeah, it's hard to get. There we go. No, we don't go. Now, the way Apple did it, I'll tell you what. Putting it back together the rest of the way is just going to be the reverse of what I did. So I think I'm going to do the rest of this off camera. You've got the idea of it anyhow. Uh, and then connect it and try booting it up. Stay tuned. All right. Let, let me try to explain what's taken place. Uh, the iMac went back together with no real problem at all. Uh, I connected the power cord and the keyboard and mouse and my FireWire drive of installers because of course there's an unformatted drive with no operating system. So I plugged in all of that Press the power button, nothing. No light came on, no chime, no nothing. Uh, and obviously I took it apart again. I went over everything that I'd done. Everything looked fine. You always wonder about capacitors with those machines because that was during the era of what was called capacitor gate. Uh, some bad capacitors that were plaguing the industry and the iMac G5 was very prone to that. My original iMac G5 in fact I had to have recapped at the Apple store. 
Uh, actually, I think they probably just put a new board in and sent it off to be recapped. That's the way they tend to work. Anyhow, uh, I, I left it there for three, four days. Finally, I didn't want to leave it sitting on my table, so I, I moved it up here. Uh, and I plugged it in, and I kept trying to, to press the button. Well, finally, I needed the installer drive for another project. So I disconnected that, did the other project. And yesterday, as I was working on the G4 Digital Audio, I happened to go by it, and I pressed the power button. The darn thing came on. Now, of course, it wouldn't boot up because there's no operating system in there. Um, and since there was no operating system, after it had been on for a while, the fans ramped up to maximum speed, which is actually normal. Uh, all right, so I shut it back down, plugged the Firewire installer drive in again, tried to restart it, nothing. Unplugged the drive, started up. Never seen anything quite like it. Uh, I even tried putting my FireWire drive of installations that I will use to start machines that don't have operating systems. Nothing. Uh, and that's pretty much where the next video is going to pick up. How I managed to deal with this situation of a computer that will start but has no operating system. <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been a merry chase, but hey, things get crazy here and those people who actually look at these videos and God bless you, believe me. Uh, I suppose you've probably gotten used to that. So, in any event, we're going to pick that up in what I plan to be the next video. For the moment, be good to other people. Other people need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. You need it, you deserve it, and it has to start with you. We'll make this world a better place. But until it gets to be a better place, please take very, very good and careful care. All right, so we're going to be back with G5. I've got to finish up with the digital audio, certainly. We've got a couple of things in mind with uh, Power Mac G5s. Uh, and who knows what else. So until those things come along, this has been Broken Electronics.